Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look at installing the Kurt Class 2 trailer hitch receiver on a 2018 Genesis G80. Now this is what your hitch is going to look like when it's installed on your Genesis and it is an exposed cross tube meaning you can see a good portion of the hitch underneath the vehicle but it's tucked up pretty well to where it looks pretty clean overall um, and it centers up pretty nicely here on our rear diffuser so overall a pretty good look. Now this is an inch and a quarter inch receiver tube opening so you are going to be a little bit limited when it comes to bike racks, cargo carriers or even a ball mount if you plan on towing a trailer but there are still options available that you can get to load up those accessories and all of them are going to stay in place with a half inch pin and clip. Now the pin and clip does not come with the hitch. A lot of times your accessories will come with one. If you want to pick up a locking version we have plenty of options available here at eTrailer and that way if you plan on leaving your accessories in place you can lock that up and know that no one's going to be able to walk away with your accessories. You have a plate style safety chain loop here which allows you to get standard S hooks or even a larger clevis style hook on here if you plan on towing a small trailer. This is a class 2 so you are going to be limited as far as capacities go and this one has a gross trailer weight rating of 3,500 pounds which is going to be the weight of the trailer plus the accessories loaded onto it. You also have a tongue weight rating of 350 pounds which is going to be the downward pressure that's put on the inside of the receiver tube opening so that's going to be more for your cargo carriers and bike racks but with 350 pounds that opens it up a decent amount to be able to carry uh, probably I'd say three to four bikes depending on how heavy those are. You are going to want to weigh your accessories as well as whatever you're loading onto it. Uh, that way you're not going over the weight capacities. Now keep in mind you also want to check the vehicle's owner's manual to see what the vehicle is capable of towing before just hooking up to a trailer and hitting the road. From the center of our hitch pin hole to the furthest point of our rear fascia, we're looking right at about four inches. And this is going to be important for some of your cargo carriers and bike racks that go into a stowed position that fold up. Uh, it may get pretty close to your rear fascia. So that's something that you're going to want to check when choosing accessories. Now your ground clearance from the top of the receiver tube opening to the ground is coming in at 10 and a half inches and that's fairly low. Uh, the main thing is that you're going to want to keep in mind is when you have suspended accessories like the cargo carriers or bike rack, they're going to want to tilt towards the ground as you go up an incline. So keep that in mind when going up those hills. Um, this is also going to be important if you do plan on picking up the ball mount. You can measure your trailer coupler and determine if you need a rise or a drop. I do recommend having something with a little extra long shank. That way it sticks out a little bit further so you don't make contact with your fascia. Now when it comes to the installation, this one is not very simple. Uh, the instruction manual is slightly misleading. Um, you do, I ended up having to pull down our mufflers and separate it from the mid pipes uh, because it does hang on the bezels here. It makes it really tough because you have to get those heat shields down. You have to drill out the holes for your hardware to go in. You'll be scraping away some caulk that's already put on there from the factory. And overall, it's just a pretty tight fit. Um, so just be prepared that this is a kind of a trickier one to get in place, but I'm going to walk you through all the steps. So follow along and we'll make sure you get your hitch installed. To begin our installation, we're going to need to lower down our mufflers to gain access to our heat shields because we'll be removing those. Uh, now there's going to be a total of four of them that we're going to remove, two on each side. The first one is right between the two exhaust tips. And if you just use a pry bar, there's a, a metal bracket there on the uh, exhaust isolator hanger there that you can use as leverage and just kind of pry that back until that pops off, just like that. And then there's also going to be one further back as we go here. And so same thing, we're just going to use the metal as leverage. Now, if these do fight you a little bit, that's kind of normal. Um, a soapy water solution generally works pretty well here. So you can just mix some dish soap and water, spray that on there, and that's going to help lubricate it. And then we can just kind of work this off. It doesn't matter if you pry it off the top or the bottom, whichever works best for you. But uh, we'll go ahead and get these removed. Now, they say in the instruction manual that you're just able to drop the mufflers down to gain access to the heat shields. I don't see that happening. There's the decorative bezel that goes around it that just doesn't allow for this to drop down. And to take that out, that's a possibility. Um, but since we're on a lift, you probably don't have a lift at home. It's probably going to be easier to just loosen up our exhaust where it bolts up to our mid pipes. Uh, and this is just going to be a 19 millimeter socket to accomplish that. Um, if you can find better ways to do it, by all means do that, but uh, we are going to be kind of all in this heat shield area doing quite a bit of work, so the more space we have, the better. So 
So I'm gonna get all four of these removed. Just make sure you're holding on to your exhaust gaskets as you take this off. Now we should be able to slide this forward off of those studs, kind of get this separated and then drop this down and then we can kind of move the exhaust out of the way. Now with the mufflers out of the way, we can gain access to our heat shield. So we're gonna remove it. There's just gonna be a series of 10 millimeter nuts, a total of six of them. So go ahead, get those removed and pull your heat shield down. And keep this handy, we're gonna be trimming this and putting it back up, so uh, just kinda of keep this close by. We have a few more steps that we'll need to do before we trim them. Now we do need to clear some of this caulk here. It's gonna make it to where it's not gonna sit super flush. Our hitch is gonna sit in this area. Um, so I'm gonna just kinda of peel back at least to here and here just to make sure we have clearance. Now to get this off, you can use a putty knife and uh, just kind of work at it. Another option, if you have a, uh, a multi-tool like this, an oscillating tool, these work really well. You can kind of just run that along. As you can see, it pulls it off pretty quick. So whatever option you have, just kind of make sure that all of this uh, is peeled back and nice and flush. Now this rubber grommet here is gonna be our access hole for our hardware, but it's also gonna be a reference mark to where we're gonna be drilling our holes. So uh, from this edge, we're gonna go two and a half inches back and center it up. Uh, I imagine this seam, you could probably follow along right there and that's gonna be pretty close to centered up. Um, another option that we're gonna have is raising the hitch up in place. But for now, let's get our mark right at the two and a half inch. I have a paint marker here, so we can visually see it. And then just make sure you've repeated all the same steps on the other side of the vehicle. So now at this point, you're gonna want an extra set of hands because we're going to raise this in place and this rear hole or the forwardmost hole of the hitch, we're gonna line it where we made that mark. And then with that reference mark there, just make a nice circle and we're gonna do it on the front on both sides. And that's gonna make our template for where we're gonna be drilling. So it's pretty snug here, uh, but this is a good spot to really make sure that we have this aligned. So just kind of go through, mark that hole and then up front do the same and then repeat. So with those marked out, I went ahead and double checked our measurements just to make sure everything's even. It's five and a quarter between each of the holes and I measured it out and that's exactly where we're looking on here. Um, so we're gonna drill out those holes and that way we can pass our hardware through it. Uh, it recommends a 17, 30 seconds. It's pretty close to a half inch. So somewhere within there is what we're looking for. And then we're gonna test fit our hardware to make sure that it's perfect. Um, but I'll go ahead and get this drilled out. And if you need to, you can start with a smaller bit and work your way up. Now, I do obviously recommend wearing safety glasses while doing this. You're going to have some hot metal coming down. So uh, just take your time here, drill that out. Um, and again, what we'll do is we'll take our hardware, the carriage bolt, and just pass it through that hole and make sure that it fits through there. If you need to, you can enlarge it. Um, and then also before we do anything after that, I'm just gonna coat everything with a little coat of spray paint. Since we have raw metal there, we wanna make sure it doesn't turn into rust long-term. Now before I coat it with any paint, I'm going to go through and I have a burr bit just to kind of clear some of our raw metal that we have poking out, uh, just to make sure it's nice and flush. Something else I'll suggest too is, uh, these are kind of approximations of us measuring out and there's really not a whole lot of wiggle room when it comes to the hitch. So if you want to, feel free to open this up a little bit more. The spacer box is going to hold our hardware in place no problem, but to have a little bit of adjustment might make it a lot easier when we go to raise our hitch up. You can also use a circular file uh, besides a burbit here, but just go through and make sure that it's nice and flush.
next we need to enlarge this access hole. The instructions doesn't say anything about this, unfortunately, and uh, we're not gonna be able to fit our uh, carriage bolts or our spacer block through this hole unless we enlarge it. Now it doesn't need to get too much more, so if you just notch out two sides, a lot of times that'll allow you to kind of slip this through. I'm gonna just use a step bit to enlarge the entire diameter. Um, so whatever method you have to get that widened out, go ahead and do that. Uh, and then once you're, you can kind of test it along just to make sure if you can get that carriage bolt head in, normally that should be plenty. So with that enlarged, first we're gonna make sure that it fits and the carriage bolt passes through. Like I said, generally the diameter of that carriage bolt is a little bit larger than our spacer block. So knowing that we can get that passed through, we'll just coat that up with some paint again. So now we can take our fish wire and where we're gonna be passing the hardware through, the holes that we drilled here, we're gonna take that coiled end and feed it back towards the access hole and then just catch that coiled portion and what we're going to do is take our spacer block and feed that into the frame rail. And then our carriage bolt, we're going to do the same thing. We'll just coil it on the end here. And then uh, sometimes it can get tight trying to feed it in this way. So if you need to, you can go in backwards here. It's eventually, once it's in the frame rail, it doesn't cause really a whole lot of issue. Um, so whichever way you need to do to get this passed up. And then from here, just kind of take this fish wire, jostle that along until you get that to drop down. And then we're just going to repeat the same process for this hole. And now normally we leave these on, but since they only gave us two, we're gonna uncoil this and repeat the same process on the other side. Now at this point, you're gonna wanna grab an extra set of hands and we're gonna feed our hardware through the holes. Now I've left the two fish wires on that side. It helps kind of keep them from pushing back in the frame rail since we only have two. Unfortunately, I'm just gonna have to be careful here, but have your serrated flange nuts ready. And that way, uh, when you get it, this pass through, uh, you get some threads passed with your bolts. You'll be able to kind of get some started. And that's going to support our hitch, making it able to hold itself in to get the rest of the hardware in. So just a few threads on each side should at least hold our hitch up. And then once you get it supported, you can go ahead and get the rest of your hardware hand tightened in. So now at this point, we can go ahead. We got all of our hard hardware at least started and we're going to snug it up with a three quarter inch socket. Now you don't need to get crazy here. We're going to come back with a torque wrench um, right after this to make sure it's torqued down properly. But we do want to draw our hitch up. So go ahead and get this tightened down. Now to torque down the hardware properly, we're going to be using the torque settings found in the instruction manual. Uh, and you're going to need a half inch torque wrench as far as torque setting goes. Um, now if you need a torque wrench, we have these available here at E-Trailer. You can generally go to an auto parts store and rent one for free. It's going to make sure that it's going to be tight enough for the lifespan of the hitch, but not too tight, putting stress on any of the hardware. Now the instruction manual has you chopping out a pretty large section on the heat shields to get this back in place. Um, don't follow those. Uh, I know that doesn't seem, uh, you know, maybe right, but uh, what I've found is mocking this up, this was able to go pretty much back in place. The only issue that we're having is right here, um, just kind of where the hitch sits down to get to this stud. So either you can cut, omit this, um, or we can cut just a slot here uh, to where the hitch can pass through. It only goes to about here. So what I'll do is make a notch um, just right where the hitch is, and you can kind of just eyeball that using a pair of snips, and we can pass that up, um, and then we shouldn't have any problems. Now, I was able to get all of them on. This last tab, I, you can trim it. I did that on the other side, and really, it, it works, but honestly, I think a better option, you could just simply take this tab and just bend it back. Um, you can probably do it by hand or a, a set of pliers and just kind of push this back. If you need to, you can take those pliers and kind of crimp that down to make it a little flat, but that omits having to trim that out. Now, if you do plan on trimming it out, you can use a pair of snips 
Um, ten, sh uh, ten shears kind of help, and I was able to notch that. But again, I don't know if it really gains us much, um, and it really doesn't seem like it's going to create that much of a, a point where it might lose structure. Um, so it's kind of up to you, whatever you want to do. Now at this point, we'll go ahead, we'll get our exhaust put back on, and then all that's left to do is load up our accessories and hit the road. And that was a look and installation of the Kurt Class 2 trailer hitch receiver on a 2018 Genesis G80.